In multicellular invertebrates, the integument is made up of three layers. It could be epidermis, a basement membrane, and a thin, thin layer of connective tissue. So epidermis is uh, a single layer of columnar epithelial cells. We know in animals, there are four types of tissues. They are epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue, and the uh, nervous tissue. So epithelial tissue is making all the coverings of the body, whether they are exposed to internal environment or external environment. So these epithelium, they are also providing glandular cells they are making unicellular or multicellular glands it means epithelium is providing mainly two function it is making sheets on all the surfaces covering on all the surfaces and then it is also making glands or glandular cells so epithelium uh, how we differentiate epithelium from uh, other types of cells that epithelium is having distinct type of uh, cell shapes when we see under microscope so when we have uh, a section of uh, any uh, tissue from uh, animals we see whether the cell shapes they are distinct they could be cuboidal shapes mean all the dimensions of the cells would be same, same and uh, could be columnar cells in which the uh, height of the cell would be more than the the breadth and the uh, width of the cells and then there could be flat cells leaf like cells they are called as squamous so there are three types of uh, connect uh, epithelium on the basis of their cell shape they could be cuboidal they could be columnar they could be uh, squamous here we can see these are the columnar cells so these uh, cells they could be in a single layer they could be in multi-layer. If they are in single layer, we say it is a simple epithelium. So in case of simple epithelium, it could be a simple uh, columnar epithelium. It could be a simple cuboidal epithelium or it could be a simple squamous epithelium. And there could be multiple layer. Uh, in that case, we say it is a stratified epithelium that is in the form of strata. So the epithelium it could be named as cu uh, stratified cuboidal it could be stratified uh, columnar it could be a uh, stratified squamous epithelium so here we can see this uh, columnar is mostly a simple so here we can see a simple so these epithelium uh, epithelial tissue it has another characteristic uh, that they don't have any blood vessels in them or there are few nerves in them so these epithelium uh, epithelial cell because it is living tissue so it is mostly have a uh, connective tissue beneath that uh, layers of epithelial cells so this connective tissue it means connective tissue mean it is a tissue that connects to different types of tissues for example here the connective tissue is connecting these epithelial tissue with muscles beneath so uh, this connective tissue it has a lot of blood vessel uh, in contrast to epithelium epithelium they don't have any blood vessels uh, but the connective tissue it is highly vascularized it has a lot of blood vessel in it so these blood vessels they nourish ep uh, connective tissue as well as they nourish these uh, epithelial layers so the uh, when there would be a, an epithelial uh, layer uh, then our tissue then beneath there would be a uh, connective tissue this connective tissue is carrying blood vessels so this connective tissue uh, would be there and then there is a basement membrane basement mem membrane is actually a thin layer of uh, extracellular material that is secreted by same epithelial cells and the connective tissue below so these uh, basement membrane is acting as a scotch like a scotch tape like structure that is attaching cells to the uh, at the base so it is uh, an extracellular material it is released by epithelial cells so in case of integument in a multicellular organism epidermis is made up of a single layer of columnar epithelial cells and then there could be a thin layer of extracellular material that is secreted by same cells and it is uh, acting as a scotch tape like structure that is attaching the cell to the uh, connective tissue 
are at the base and then there is a thin layer of connective tissue this connective tissue is nourishing this epithelium and attaching it to the muscle layer below so epidermal cell they may have cilia uh, so in body when we see there are extension of cell membrane uh, wherever they are for example they are in a respiratory tract there are cilia on the cells uh, and then uh, there could be uh, cilia on the cells that are uh, present on the inner layer of reproductive tract uh, or there could be flagella like on sperms or some other uh, tissues in the uh, some some like in protozoan so these all are actually in uh, the cilia flagella or microvilli for example we know it is another type of extension so we would summarize that there are about three types of extension that are uh, present on the cells there could be flagella that are longer they are few in number there could be cilia they are like flagella but they are more in number they are shorter and they these both are supported by microtubules from the cytoskeleton of the cell uh, but the third one that is microvilli they are the extension of the cell membrane that are provided by actin filaments that are microfilaments they support them so these microvilli they are the third uh, structure that is extension of cell membrane so these extension they are always present on uh, epithelial tissue they are not present on connective tissue muscles or any other type of tissue so cilia and flagella they are present on the epidermal cell because they are epithelial in nature uh, so there could be cilia present on these integumentary uh, cells epidermal cells then epidermis may have glandular cells we uh, previously discussed that epithelial tissue it is providing almost all glands we can uh, count the exception that are from connective tissue or some other nervous tissue but rest of all the glands they are from epithelial whether they are uh, endocrine or they are exocrine glands As we said that the multicellular organisms, they may have uh, in, an integument of uh, three layers, epidermis, basement membrane and connective tissue. The Some of these animal, multicellular animals, they may have an extra layer that is present on the top of their uh, epidermal cells and this layer is called as cuticle. It is a non-living uh, surface and it is secreted by same epidermal cells so these epidermal cells they secrete this cuticle and extra layer so the structure of this cuticle is highly variable it could be thin and elastic or it could be thick and rigid and it could support the body uh, like in crustacean and arachnids and insects it is an uh, the cuticle is making an exoskeleton it is supporting the body so this cuticle it could be soft it could be thin or elastic when the composition of the uh, cuticle is different than uh, the cuticle that is thick and hard but the generally cuticles are consist of chitin a polysaccharide like the polysaccharides we know are starch and the glycogen and uh, the uh, cellulose so these uh, mon uh, these polysaccharides they are made up of monomers here on the top we can see the monomers of the uh, cellulose so they are glucose molecules similarly in cu cuticles the chitin it is made up of it is a polysaccharide it is made up of monomers or monosaccharides but these monosaccharides they are different than the glucose monosaccharide because the chitin monosaccharides they contain nitrogen in them so they could be called as amides so these are the chains of amides so in chitin it is a polysaccharide made up of monosaccharides that are having nitrogen in them and then in uh, cuticles there would be fibers of proteins so cuticles are made up of chitin that is a polysaccharide and protein so these make uh, an extra layer on the top of the uh, epidermal layer of the cells
the animals that have cuticle on their surface mostly the hard cuticle that is present in insects or arachnids so they these animal when they uh, have to grow they have this disadvantage that they first have to shed the cuticle and then grow and then again make this cuticle that process is called as the molting or ecdysis so in multicellular organisms the first phylum that is porifera sponges that are the marine animals uh, they have two layers of cells and in between these two layers of cell there is a non uh, living material called mesoglia the outermost layer of cells is called as epidermis and it is actually the integument and beneath uh, the epidermis there would be a uh basement membrane and then toward inside to uh, because they are vast like animals uh, toward inner side there are cells that are uh, toward the spongio seal or the cavity of the sponges so these two layers of cell that is the epidermal cell they are called as pinacocyte pinacocytes are actually epithelial like cells Uh, they make the integument and toward inner side are the cells that are quenocytes these quenocytes they are uh, collar cell they have flagella in them and they move the um, water out of the uh, sponge in case of uh, nidarians hydra are the example epidermis of the hydra that is the integument is few layer thick and the corals they have uh, this uh, epidermal layer with the uh, modified cell that release calcium carbonate so these calcium carbonate they make shells of the corals so in case of uh, porifera it is the pinacocyte the outer epidermal layer that is making integument and in hydra there is epidermis Uh, that is few cell layer thick and in case of corals this epidermis it may have modified cells glandular cells that release calcium carbonate so the uh, corals they make shells when we go to pla uh, the phylum platyelminthes that have the uh, tapeworm and the flatworm uh, these uh, animals they have a definite uh, tegument or integument that is called as tegument tegument mean to cover so their integument is made up of same uh, layers that is the epidermal layer and then is the basement membrane and then are the uh, connective tissue and beneath there are muscles so this uh, in case of platyhelminthes that are the uh, flukes and the tape worm like here we can see it is like tinea solem and then is the liver fluke so these uh, animals they have their epidermal layer in the form of syncytium so in case of syncytium the cells they may ha not have uh, cellular boundaries they have multiple nuclei but the uh, we know in case of cell division there would be Uh, karyokinesis first and then there would be cytokinesis karyokinesis mean division of nuclei and uh, cytokinesis mean division of cells so there these are the uh, such type of cells in which uh, karyokinesis have occur but the cytokinesis would not occur so these uh, cells they appear to be in a layer form that is uh, having only a single cell that is having only uh that is having uh, multiple nuclei so this uh, organization is called as syncytium so in case of these cells uh, in, in case of these uh, in, uh, animals the cytoplasm uh, could be divided into two portions that is the distal cytoplasm and proximal cytoplasm so in case of distal cytoplasm it is not having organelles in it and it is lined by 
the uh, plasma membrane and it is having plasma membrane is supported by glycocalyx glycocalyx is actually the uh, composition of polysaccharide present on the outer side of the membrane so the membrane cell membrane from outer side is supported by the carbohydrate uh, or the polysaccharides um, and proximal cytoplasm the uh, the cytoplasm that is near to the nuclei uh, this cytoplasm is having organelles in it distal cytoplasm is actually cytoplasm that is at distance from the uh, nuclei and proximal cytoplasm is the cytoplasm that is near to the nuclei so there are two clear portion that is not found in other cells in other cells the organelles they are evenly distributed throughout the cytoplasm but in case of syncytium of the uh, integument of tapeworm the epidermal layer it is in the form of a single uh, cell that is having multiple nuclei that is called as syncytium and in that syncytium are a single cell having multiple nuclei the outer layer of the cytoplasm that is away from the nuclei is the clear cytoplasm it is called as distal cytoplasm it is uh, covered by cell membrane and that cell membrane is actually supported by carbohydrate from outer side so we have to remember that carbohydrate they are always present toward outer side of the membrane in case of proximal cytoplasm it is near to the uh, nuclei and it is having a lot of uh, organelles in it then there would be a basal lamina the third layer and this basal lamina is actually uh, the composition of the basement membrane plus connective tissue in it so the basement membrane we know is the scotch tape like uh, structure that is our material that is released by same epithelial cells that is attaching them to the other tissues so this uh, basal lamina is actually a merger of basement membrane and the connective tissue beneath and then beneath this connective tissue there are thick layers of muscles so this type of uh, integument that is tegument in the form of syncytium would help these platyalmanthes flukes and the tapeworm to absorb nutrients uh, and then it is also protecting because most of these flukes and uh, tapeworms they are parasites in uh, other animals so these uh, though uh, these uh, tegument it would help them to uh, avoid the so the tegument is made up of the epidermis that is in the form of syncytium then a basal lamina that is made up of basement membrane and the uh, connective tissue and then are the uh, layers of muscles so these uh, epidermal cell that is in the form of syncytium they may have uh, different uh, unique structures on them uh, these unique structures could be microvilli or they are called as tubercles so microvilli they are also called as micro triches so micro triches are present in cystodes these micro triches are fine hair like filaments that are distributed throughout the surface of the body and they give the body surface a smooth and silky appearance they are extension of the cell membrane so they are coming out of the uh, epidermal cells so the as cystodes they are not having any digestive and excretory system so these microvilli uh, they act as microvilli in uh, digestive system they increase the surface area for the absorption of nutrients and elimination of waste material uh, so uh, in fact the tegument uh, could be uh, uh, called as the gut of animal that is up uh, turned out inside out so because the gut of the animals or the intestine it is having uh, same type of microvilli so microvilli are actually or micro triches are actually the uh, same microvilli they are supported by the cytoskeleton we know the cytoskeleton is having actin filaments that are microfilaments and intermediate filaments so these microvilli they are supported by those 
microfilaments and in case of tubercles they are called as spines uh, these are present in trematodes uh, the tegument tegments contains a number of invaginations or uh, the pits so uh, they are externally lined with minute tubercles among which are dispersed bristle like projections called spines spines are embedded in the basal lamina of the uh, tegument and the tip is finely pointed to the external surface so they are also supported or made up of array of actin filaments like in the microvilli but they are embedded inside the basal lamina most part is uh, embedded in the basal lamina or we can say they are starting from the spines they are starting from the connective tissue that is beneath the epidermal cells and their tips are just coming out of the uh, the pits that are present uh, in the uh, in uh, tegument and tubercles they are numerous they are fairly regularly arranged and they are uh, rounded so these two structures could be present on the tegmentation of the uh, platyelminthes that is the microvilli that are extensions they are uh, also called as micro triches micro trix is the singular of the, these micro triches and uh, we can see them here and then there are pits in these pits there are uh, the spine like structures so these structures they are actually most part of them is embedded in the basal lamina so these two structures they are making they are increasing uh, microvilli they are actually increasing surface area and then they are uh, helping in the uh, ingestion uh, sorry uh, for the uh, uh, new absorption of nutrients and the microvilli the, may increase the surface area for the absorption of the nutrients and removal of the waste and the spines or tubercles they help these animals to get stick to the host uh, surfaces in order to uh, get protection and for anchoring into the host tissue In phylum nematodes and uh, the annelids, uh, they have an extra layer that is present on the outermost uh, uh, layer of the cells that is the epidermis. Uh, so the configuration of the integument is similar to other multicellular organisms that is the epidermal layer would be present and in case of nematodes and annelids, these epidermal layers they could be uh, these are the same epithelial layers it could be single cell uh, layer or it could be a syncytium and syncytium mean the cells they have multiple uh, nuclei in them and they are making a single uh, cell that is covering the body and uh, then there would be a, a longitudinal muscle that are present beneath these so it is uh, understood that beneath epidermis there would be a a layer of uh, basement membrane and then there would be a layer of connective tissue and then are the longitudinal muscle over there so on the surface of this epidermal layer there is another uh, layer that is of cuticle so in case of nematodes and in layers because they are soft bodied so their uh, cuticle is not having uh, polysaccharides in them that are the chitin their cuticle is uh, having most of the protein fibers that are collagenous fiber collagen is a protein so these collagen fibers they are laid down by these epidermal cells on their surface to make a multi-layered cuticle in order to provide protection so these cuticles they may also help to make the body stiff when there would be a pressure of uh, fluids inside body in case of nematodes because they are not having uh, circular muscle they are only having longitudinal muscle in them so for hydrostatic skeleton uh, the uh, cuticle it acts as circular muscle to produce the uh, 
uh, stiffness in the body of these nematodes in case of annelids the annelids have uh, two types of muscles they have longitudinal muscles as well as the circular muscles so their uh, longitudinal muscle they uh, are helping in the body to proceed forward uh, uh, to get uh, shorten or to get lengthen but the circular muscle they would uh, produce hydrostatic uh, pressure in the different segments of the body for the local in case of mollusks the uh, same configuration again that epidermis is present and this epidermis is actually delicate and soft and beneath this epidermis there would be a layer of uh, basement membrane and then is the uh, connective tissue and these uh, epidermal layers or epidermal cell they may have modified cells in them that are glandular cells they secrete calcium carbonate that make shells on these molluscan animals echinoderms they also have an integument of uh, uh, a thin ciliated epidermis that their epidermis is having cilia on them and then there would be an underlying connective tissue layer uh, after basement membrane and this connective tissue is actually called as dermis and this dermis contains calcium carbonate in it so they are providing an uh, a skeleton type structure to these kind of The integument of the arthropod is the most complex uh, of the uh, invertebrate integument because it pro also provides the exoskeleton to these animals. The arthropod integument consists of a uh, single layered cuticle that is the outermost layer that is non-living layer of the integument and it is having two uh, layers in it that is the epicuticle the uppermost cuticle and then is the procuticle that is the cuticle present between epidermis and epicuticle so this cuticle is the epicuticle it is thin it is made up of proteins uh, fibers and then the lipid layer it is uh, present on the surface of these epicuticle and uh, this lip these lipid layers they help to prevent desiccation of the uh, animal and the procuticle it is the inner uh, cuticle it is uh, thick it is having uh, the lamella or layers of proteins and then the uh, chitin is also included in it we know the chitin is a polysaccharide it is having monomers that are amide containing nitrogen in them uh, they are like other polysaccharide but they have uh, their monomers they have nitrogen in them so these uh, procuticles they are thick they have protein as well as the chitin and it could be called as true cuticle the epicuticle it is only made up of protein fibers and then on the surface of these protein fibers are the layers of protein fibers there are layers of lipid the uh, beneath them there is epidermis and this epidermis is actually secreted this cuticle for its protection so this epicute uh, the, this epidermis it is epithelial tissue and it could be uh, precisely in case of insects it is called as hypodermis and beneath this hypodermis uh, or epidermis there would be a basement membrane that is the non-living material secreted by these cells to get attached to the surface and uh, the lipid that is as i already told the lipid present on the uh, epicuticle it helps uh, as a the cuticle of the arthropods is hardened by mainly two processes that are classif uh, calcification and the sclerotization calcification is the 
hardening of cuticle by release of calcium carbonate uh, that is released from these uh, same epidermal cell they uh, absorb calcium from the hemolymph and then uh, make it uh, into calcium uh, carbonate they release it on the uh, surface of their uh, procuticle that is the innermost layer of the cuticle and uh, it it is it would hard the cuticle like in crabs and lobsters and in case of sclerotization like in insects the um, cuticle is hardened by uh, the release of special type of protein in this type of protein different layers of the uh, uh, protein of the uh, cuticle these layers are lamella they get attached to each other through cross linkages so the protein fiber that are present in one layer they are linked to the protein fibers that are present in the other layers of the uh, the cuticle so they are in this process get hardened then there is another process that is called as uh, the tanning so if the cross linkages it is also involving some pigment like the quinone uh, one of them is the melanin so quinone are actually the oxidized type of uh, phenols so these uh, give colors to the uh, cuticle so in case of insects and in case of the other arthropods there could be pigments that are present in the uh, uh, sclera uh, sclerized uh, cuticle or it could be present in the calcified cuticles so uh, the sclerotization is actually formation of highly resistant and insoluble protein sclerotin sclerotin is actually uh, the protein uh, that uh, are present in the form of layers so these fibers they of different layers they are linked together uh, through the linkages uh, of the other fibers these sclerotoid uh, proteins are the cuticles they are mostly present in the insects uh, on their mouth parts uh, by which they could uh, chew the uh, food material so they are present in the hard parts of the exoskeleton and uh, the body it means composition of the exoskeleton would change uh, as uh, the function of the uh, organs would change so the exoskeleton it may be made up of a simple cuticle it could be uh, made up of calcified cuticle it could have uh, sclerotin in uh, certain parts of the body The vertebrates includes five classes. We know the fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. We have to see their entanglement, and their entanglement composition is similar to the uh, invertebrate multicellular organisms, but they have some uh, different uh, structures or derivative structures uh, that are associated with their entanglement. If we see fish, fish are having uh, three groups that are the jawless fishes cartilaginous fishes and the bony fishes the jawless fishes are the most primitive fishes and the bony fishes they have they are the modern fish uh, the jawless fishes they are lampreys and hagfish for example so these uh, lampreys and hagfishes uh, they have relatively thick skin that is made up of um, uh, the stratified epithelial cells and these epithelial cells few of them are glandular cell so they secrete a protective layer on the uh, their surface that protective layer is actually cuticle so their cuticle is made up of uh, protein fibers that are collagenous fibers and in hagfishes these uh, multicellular uh, epidermis it is releasing slime uh, because they are converted into slime glands uh, so these slime they uh, cover the uh, it is made up of mucus and we know the mucus is actually the polysaccharides that absorb water and give uh, the slippery condition or 
the uh, gum like or jelly like uh, condition or slimy condition on the surface of the body so this slime it protects the uh, hagfishes from external parasite and it gives them name the, that is the slime eel so hagfishes they are called as slime eel due to presence of a slimy cuticle on their surface and uh, in both jawless fishes that is lamprey and hagfish the outermost layer that we said is cuticle in case of uh, the lamprey it is the it is only made up of proteins but not having any secretion on them that is the slime in case of hagfishes the cuticle is made up of protein and then the slime is also present that is the mucus it is polysaccharide and beneath them uh, the cuticle there is a multi-layered epidermis and beneath that epidermis there is a uh, dead uh, material uh, layer of uh, dead material that is secreted from this epidermis and uh, this material is our layer is called as basement membrane and beneath that basement membrane there is uh, presence of uh, the connective tissue that is attaching this epidermal layer to the uh, other tissues that are beneath so uh, this uh, connective tissue it is also called as dermis in case of the vertebrate animals and uh, we know the uh, connective tissue it is highly vascular and epidermal cell or epithelial cell they are not having any muscles so these connective tissue they are uh, attaching this these epidermal cell to other tissues they are also connective tissues are also nourishing these epidermal The cartilaginous fishes because they have uh, cartilage in their skeleton they are not having bones like sharks and rays uh, they have multiple layer thick epidermis that is made up of epithelial uh, tissue cell layers and beneath these uh, epithelial uh, layers there would be uh, we know basement membrane and then uh, are the layers of connective tissue this layer of connective tissue is called as dermis and inside this dermis grow palocoid scales palocoid mean they are tooth shaped they are like vertebrate tooth and uh, these uh, palocoid scale they are also called as dermal denticles they uh, grow from the uh, dermis that is connective tissue and then they appear from epidermis so palacoid scales are like uh, the uh, vertebrate tooth and they have a central pulp cavity like in teeth supplied with blood vessels and they are uh, surrounded by a, a conical uh, uh, type of layer of dentine uh, dentine is actually cartilage that is uh, hardened by deposition of the uh, calcium and then the outermost layer of this uh, tooth is actually an organic substance uh, like calcium and it is making enamel uh, so this is like the vertebrate tooth palocoid scales they cannot grow in size but their number could be increased when the fish would increase in size so most part of the skin of the uh, in, uh, cartilaginous fishes that are sharks or rays they are covered by palacoid scale or teeth like scales so uh, it is assumed that these oral teeth they evolve from these uh, dermal uh, teeth that are the denticles or palacoid scales and they migrate into the mouth uh, but some people say it is other way around that the uh, oral teeth they come on the surface of the uh, fish so it is uh, uh, not still known that whether they uh, are uh, the uh, dermal dentine or the dermal scales they are evolved from oral teeth or oral teeth were evolved from the dermal scales these scales they give cartilaginous fishes a sandpaper like texture they protect the fish and they uh, provide it the streamlining also the bony fish they have the skeleton of bones so they are called as bony fishes they are the most modern fishes uh, 
they have uh, same organization or composition of their skin that is the outermost layer is epidermal layer that is made up of epithelial tissues these epithelial layer they are very thin and we can hardly distinguish it from uh, the uh, connective tissue that is present beneath uh, that epithelial tissue so the uh, connective tissue present below epidermis uh, is called as dermis and this dermis it contains scales in it these scales they are in bony fishes they are different than the pelacoid scales that are present in sharks and rays because pelacoid scale they are teeth like they erupt out from the uh, or they penetrate their epidermis but in case of the bony fishes the scales they are actually bony but they are present inside the epidermis their ep uh, inside the dermis their epidermis remain intact so the scale they would not come out from the uh, epidermis uh, so these scales we have seen them in uh, our practical classes they could be genoid scale they could be cosmoid scale they could be telio scale these scale they could be cycloid they could be tenoid scales so these scale they all are having a bony structure and then the uh, epidermal layer covering these uh, bony scales and uh, the skin or the epidermis it is also having that is the outermost layer uh, it is also having the mucus glands uh, in it so they release mucus uh, mucus is we know slimy polysaccharides that absorb water to make a uh, gel like structure and it prevents the uh, fishes from bacterial and fungal infections and uh, reduce reduce the friction also so there could be granular glands that are present on the skin that release the uh, poisonous alkaloids uh, these granular glands they are actually modified uh, epithelial cells so the teleost they may uh, that live in deep aquatic environment they also have modified epithelial cells that are called as photophores they uh, radiate uh, uh, they shine in the deep environment therefore difference in the cartilaginous fishes and bony fishes is that the cartilaginous fishes their dermal scale that are pelacoid scale they are teeth like they penetrate epidermis while in case of bony fishes these uh, scales they remain inside the dermis and on them uh, there would be a thin layer of the scales of the uh, fishes they are uh, same structure to that of the hair in mammals uh, the, both these structures uh, they uh, have similar genes that are responsible for the formation of scales and hairs uh, so these uh, because these both structure they are uh, dermal in nature they originate from the connective tissue that is present beneath the epithelial tissue so these uh, uh, scales they are uh, generally made up of collagenous protein fibers that are covered by thin flexible layer of bone we know there are uh, pelacoid scales that are uh, here in, in the diagram a then we have cosmoid scale and we have the genoid scale and then we have tdo scales uh, the pelacoid scales they are teeth like they are only present in sharks and rays and these pelacoid scale uh, they have a pulp cavity the central cavity and it is having uh, the uh, blood vessels and nerves and on them there is a bony structure that is called as dentine and then on this dentine the uh, enamel is present it is uh, enamel is made up of hydroxyapatite a crystal of calcium and phosphate that is the hardest structure in universe uh, so then uh, the uh, Cosmoid, uh, these pelacoid scale they are not present in bony fishes they are only present in cartilaginous fishes and in bony fishes they could be cosmoid scale they could be uh, genoid scale or they could be tdo scale tdo scale are the simplest one because they are made up of only bones so these bones they bony structure they oh, get originate from uh, the uh, connective tissue that is the dermis and they remain in dermis they don't penetrate the 
uh, epidermis like in case of pelicoid scale so these are only one layer of bone and uh, then uh, the uh, in case of uh, uh, cosmoid scale there are, and gonoid scale there are two layers of bones the vascular bone and the lamellar bone lamellar bone is actually compact bone compact bone mean the fibers of protein in these bones they are uh, compactly arranged to each other there are no spaces so this is making a layer that is called as lamella and above them are the vascular uh, bone that are having pores in them the fibers of the protein they have gaps between them so they appear to have uh, pore in them so in both the gonoid and the cosmoid scale there are uh, two layers of bone the only difference is presence of dentine uh, on the upper layer of the uh, vascular bone so lamellar bone is the deepest layer and then is the vascular bone and then on top of that is the dentine and on the dentine there is a layer of enamel in case of cosmoid scale in case of gonoid scale it is the uh, deepest most layer is the uh, lamellar bone and uh, on that is the vascular bone and on top of that there is enamel and in between dentine is absent that is present only in cosmoid scale so uh, the uh, bony fishes they may have uh, the uh, cosmoid scale they may have gonoid scale but most of the modern fish they have only teleost scale that are the cycloid and tenoid we know cycloid are circular and they have the uh, growth rings in them so they grow with the uh, age of the fish but in case of pelicoid scale we saw they don't grow but their number would grow with the size of the fish and uh, cycloid scale we say they are circular tenoid scale they have uh, the ridges on their posterior side so they are 